take a person like Ed Cohn. They call him the GOAT, the greatest yep. of all time. And I've uh, done a little coaching with Ed. And uh, he will submit that good form and as neutral a spine as possible, putting more responsibility to the hips is the way to go. So you can argue with the person who has records that I, I hope people realize when Ed was setting world records, he was number one. Number two was 30% lower load. So it would be like an Olympic sprinter winning the Olympic sprints with a 10 second sprint and number two person coming in at 13 seconds. I mean, people <laughs> don't realize what a phenom uh, Ed uh, was. So there's one example um, now, he had the hips and the architecture and the body segment length proportions to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, would that work for a guy like me, who's very long in the legs uh, and shorter in the body versus someone with the architecture of, of like the great uh, Ed Cohn? But let's go to another very successful powerlifting coach. And I could uh, pull out, uh, these are all my friends. Marty Gallagher would be a name. If you know Marty, he's mm -hmm. coached uh, Ed, uh, uh, Kirk Karvowski, and, and again, some of the fabulous, fabulous lifters over the years. Now, Marty, um, I can tell you, he's a little older than I am. He's in his late 60s now. He has never had back pain himself. He has squatted over 500 pounds for five decades. You can get your head around that. Wow. So he's very resilient. He's built like iron and he slightly curves his back, not with butt wink at the bottom, but a gentle distributed stress all the way through his spine. And that allows him to pull the bar around his knees. But I think you were quite perceptive a few moments ago when you were intimating that you lock the back. Mm -hmm. So in terms of spinal stress and resilience, locking the spine in a neutral posture and moving entirely about the fulcrum of the hip would be the most resilient for the spine. However, you can flex without creating a stress concentration at a single level but create a gentle curve. And, and some of the great power lifters have quite a bit more in the thoracic and the upper regions of their spine to allow the mechanics to pull around the knee. But nonetheless, that gentle curve, actually it elongates the erector spinae. You get more advantage out of uh, the length tension curve of erector spinae. But here's the thing. When, when someone like Marty coaches it, this gentle curve, he coaches a locked spine. So it's a little bit flexed, and then he locks it. You'll notice, and when you measure this, the motion is still around the hips. So uh, that is uh, second best. It, in some lifters, creates a mechanical advantage, and in others, not. Uh, it depends. But the real issue that I think a lot of the people who get on the internet who discuss these things, um, they don't realize, they think that if you descend in the squat and then your pelvis tucks underneath, do you see how that creates a stress concentration, usually only at the bottom joint or the lower two? So L4, L5, L5, S1. Those are the most common sites of disc bulges. And this is the mechanism. They descend down and then the spine, what a weightlifter would call breaks, but that's most of the motion is focused right at that level. That's a real problem. And then when they start to pull out of the wedge and get the weight moving, the first movement takes place in regaining that natural curve as they come up. And Marty Gallagher wouldn't coach it that way. They create that very beautiful, nice stress distribution. They lock it, pull the bar through to upright, and then at the very end, they lock back into the uh, lockout position. And we can talk a lot about the mechanics of that if you wish. Some yeah. when they pull into lockout, you'll see the head and neck flex. Uh, some people get a bad neck 
or a, a painful neck with that strategy. But when you think about it, what that strategy does, it creates more tension in erector spinae through the shift on the length tension curve. However, in other people, um, say you don't want to win the worlds, then uh, they would be so much better as they're pulling through just to lock the head, neck, and thoracic spine together as a unit, if you, if you know what I mean. So you can, you can see how this discussion can keep on going and going and going. But every single athlete who comes to BackFit Pro has a history and a legacy of back issues. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to understand their particular pain mechanism, mm -hmm. their particular advantages and disadvantages because of the architecture of their body. Um, but we would very rarely argue for um, that butt wink is okay. That isn't okay in our world. And when we can eliminate that, we might uh, figure out where the stress of a hip capsule is. And again, we might go into internal rotation, external rotation. We would find the optimal width through the various tests that we would do. And uh, we would determine with great precision where the resilience lies. Um, but here's a, another thing that just came into my mind when I go back to a study that we did years ago. I was measuring the length tension curve in erector spinae. So we just had uh, graduate students to start with put about, I forget what it was, uh, say 40 kilo or 100 pounds on the person's back. And then they did the pelvic tilt simulating butt wink. So the pelvic tilt focuses stress right at L5, S1 and L4, L5. The upper back doesn't move. And we did that with 100 pounds on their back for 10 reps. Do you know we had to abandon the study because it was so provocative of back pain? Wow. So when I hear people arguing, oh, well, it's okay, really? Um, I would like to follow them through their career, as I have with, with many, many people. And uh, they may get away with it for a little while, but cumulative stress over time will cause, and I can, we've got models after models that have very precisely depicted this. These are put together by dynamic disc designs, but really based on the mechanisms that we've documented over the years, you can see, I hope, a little red imperfection in the collagen of the disc. Now notice what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to drive the thrust line straight down the center of the joint. I hope you can see the whole disc squeezes. But now I'm going to do what you might call butt wink or heavy flexion at the bottom. And now I'm going to flex it and you see the hydraulic pressure starting to open up the uh, collagen fiber. So, you know, when you get into an argument, is, is butt wink okay? If you had ball and socket joints in your spine, it would be a totally different discussion. The hip joint, being a ball and socket, is made to create power through the range of motion. Fabulous. With an adaptable fabric, which is the materials category that a disc falls into, a fabric like my shirt, if I wanted to delaminate the fibers, I would do it with stress strain reversals. So now we have to get into the discussion of how often are we repeating the uh, squat reps, uh, uh, et cetera. But if I re re create stress strain reversals back and forth on my shirt, over time, the fibers will delaminate. Mm -hmm. Now, that adaption could be a good adaption or it could be a negative adaption. We can certainly talk about that. But this is an adaptable fabric. As the fibers loosen, giving you more spine mobility, the price you pay, because those fibers contain hydraulic pressure in the nucleus, they have to, to have maximum resilience for containing that pressure, the ground substance between the fibers should be tight. And if it isn't, they will slowly work loose and the nucleus will be driven through, as I've shown you, as a function of posture. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it will bulge accordingly. So if I had an orange seed and I wanted it to squirt that way every time, I would bias the thrust line and out it would come. 
But if I wanted to lock the seed, I would drive the thrust line right down the middle. So, so it is with uh, uh, disc mechanics. But, you know, say you're a gymnast or you're a yoga master or you uh, are a baseball pitcher or a golfer. All of these things require a fairly loose collagen matrix. But you'll also find that to the great destruction that's gone on in the last few years in professional golf with them getting far too heavy in load and deep squatting and whatnot, and that's not the athleticism they use. So you'll, you'll notice a lot of them have now backed off and they've gone back to uh, training the old way. So there's an adaption to the collagen for mobility. But if you're a power lifter, an Olympic lifter, you then are adapting stiffer collagen, more resilience. Now, you won't find very many uh, elite power lifters who can tie their shoe. You won't find many who can tickle their ear. <laughs> but that's the stiffness that they've developed to create a resilient body to pick up literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But that this, you can't confuse the adaption. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a lot of mobility and a lot of resilience to contain the extreme pressures that you're going to create in the nucleus. So then we get into situations like CrossFit, mm -hmm. where doing uh, Olympic lifting four reps, the first rep might be quite fine and, and good form, but the whole design of the program is to exhaust you. Mm -hmm. Now form uh, deteriorates, and uh, I think we all know uh, what, what happens with that. Now, I've noticed recently that uh, there's a lot of good coaches in CrossFit, and they're recognizing these mechanisms and um, adapting some of the uh, tasks uh, in accordance with biology. To, but, you know, <laughs> the next thought that goes into my mind is our job is to restore athletes' careers. Well, if you can't get them back competing, you haven't done your job. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that uh, MMA in the UFC is particularly healthy either, but we have to, you know, restore those careers. And, uh, but uh, the, the key there is volume of exposure. So it's not necessarily that flexion of the spine is inherently wrong for everyone. It just all depends on your ultimate goals, especially in fitness and your prior history of injury. Whereas a gymnast may have to be able to bring their spine into flexion extension over time, but their spine is also adapting to those forces. Whereas a power lifter, obviously their goal is to adapt their spine and their collagen to resist that flexion so that they can adapt and become uh, more resilient to carrying those heavy, heavy loads. Exactly. Yeah. Like a gymnast, when you look at the great ones, they, they train with body weight mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I would never say they're not strong. They're incredibly strong, but as you know, they, they train with body weight and uh, they, allow greater resilience of their spine as they go into these fabulous deviated postures. Mm -hmm. But for the average person squatting, uh, that violates the code just a little bit, and they've increased their risk of uh, me seeing them as a patient and, and you. So I guess we should be happy for that, but uh, <laughs> you know, our job is to put ourselves out of business, really.